this. I remember early on people coming to me. I remember family members saying, why? They were so frustrated with me. Why can you not just be normal? I know other people at work. They're Christians. They don't talk about God all the time. But I talk about Jesus every day because I believe in a living Jesus and I'm not going to shut my mouth by the grace of God. Thank goodness I haven't been boiled in oil. <laughs> Hope it doesn't come to that. I remember another friend. My friend I grew up with, he was a really good buddy, and I hope I don't slip and say his name because I'm putting this on YouTube, but uh, he'll probably figure out who he is if he heard it. But he was one of, he was my, one of my best friends from first grade. Played toy soldiers together as little kids, played a ton of hockey together as teens and adolescents. Uh, really close friends all of our life. Probably my best friend about most of my adolescent years. He was my best friend. And then at 17, and then when we were teenagers, we chase girls, listen to Rolling Stones music together. We were sinners together. But then at 17 years old, I had an amazing experience. I encountered a living Jesus Christ and he changed my whole life. And I remember after several months of that, after I'd been a Christian several months, less than a year, I remember he came to me one day, really solemn, really like serious, like a person going to do an intervention on a drug addict. I need to talk to you. What about, Tim? Well, and I've grown up with this family. I've spent the night in this house a hundred times. I don't ever remember them going to church. I, maybe they did, I just didn't see it. I never remember them talking about God. I don't, I, I just don't remember that at all. And I was really close to these people. And I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to make disparaging remarks about this family. They were really, really good to me. They were so good to me. They were nicer to me than my own parents. Well, they were spoiling me. But anyway, this family was good to me. And I love these people. But I remember after I'd been saved a matter of months, I remember my friend came, I have to talk to you. What? My whole family's really concerned for you. Why? You're such a fanatic now. You are such a religious weirdo now. And my mom, I mean, she's particularly concerned for you. Now, you know, we go to church and we believe in God and all that stuff, but you, my mom says you're taking this like way too far. You're just taking this whole religion thing just way too serious. And she says it's not going to turn out good. She said absolutely for sure you will burn out. You need to just be normal. Well, you know, I guess I could just say 30 years later I haven't burned out yet. Why? Because I believe in a living Jesus. If I believed in religion, I might have long since burned out. But I believe in a living Jesus. And you know, I just want to close with this today. Uh, beautiful response is recorded in the Matthew uh, version of events. Matthew 28, verse 9. The Bible says that as Mary, we, we saw in the John version that he, Jesus said, Don't hold on to me, Mary. What was she doing? Well, the Matthew version tells us, I think Mary and even his mother was there. The, Bi the Bible says they were, they were clasping his feet and worshiping him at the tomb. Clasping his feet and worshiping him. Oh, what a response. I love the feet of Jesus. A person has feet. Oh, this probably sounds nutty to you guys. I don't know, but I just tell Jesus all the time, I can't wait to kiss your feet. I can't wait to look at your face. I can't wait to kiss your feet. I can't wait to worship you in person. And you know, I just want you to think about that this week. Have the response of Mary. You say, but he's not here yet. I know, but in your prayer time, in your devotion, in your love for him, just reach out by faith and clasp his feet. Just hold on to Jesus. He's alive. He's real. And I just close with this thought. You know, Jesus died a brutal death on a cross, and he did rise from the dead. But you know what? Those scars are still very apparent in heaven. When John visited heaven, John said, I beheld a lamb, and there were wounds upon the lamb that once had caused his death. The scars are still there. Someday we'll see those scars. We'll see how much he's loved us. The Bible specifically says when he comes back, the Bible says he will be wearing a garment 
dipped in his own blood. When he comes back through the eastern sky to get us, he's going to be wearing a garment with his blood still on it. It still means something, the cross and the resurrection. The same Jesus who died is the same Jesus who rose from the dead. And uh, we're going to see those scars. We're going to see that love. We're going to have our own chance, I believe, with all of my heart, to put our fingers in the nail holes, to put our fingers in the holes in his feet, to love him and to worship at his feet. Oh, Jesus, thank you for the resurrection. Thank you for the cross. You loved us so much that you would die for us. What a love. No greater love has any man than this, that he would lay down his life for his friends. But Jesus, you didn't stay dead. Three days later, you walked out of the tomb and you are alive today. You are alive in our little town, Burleson, Texas, today. You are alive in America. You are alive across planet Earth. You are a living Jesus. And we just as it were, by faith, Lord. You said in Hebrews that by faith they saw him who is invisible. And by faith we just grasp your feet and we say that we love you. And we worship you, the living, risen Savior. We worship you. I pray, God, by the power of the Holy Spirit that you would give us all greater and greater and greater conviction of a living Jesus. That we would live our lives every moment of every day as if you were alive because you are alive and now lord we just thank you for your word that tells us this beautiful story and this resurrection we worship you lord in jesus name amen amen bless you.